Tina Turner was born on November 26, 1939, as Anna Mae Bullock. Known as the Queen of Rock and Roll, her powerful voice was incomparable, and her stage presence was like no other. She received 12 Grammy Awards and had been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice, once in 1991 with Ike Turner, and again in 2021 as a solo artist. After years of illness, she passed away on May 24, 2023. Despite becoming one of the largest icons in rock and roll music history, she remained loving and empathetic to everyone throughout her entire career. I'm a friendly, clean person. I'm, um, I've been on the light side for a very long time before I start practicing Buddhism. And in my practice in Buddhism, it helped me to really know who I am. I'm a harmonious person. I'm a friendly, harmonious person. I surround myself with that. You come backstage to my show, you don't feel a lot of hostility, not even from the crew people. It's only love because that's what I, that's how I am. That's what I, I insist upon because I need to feel that around me. Also, I think one emanates what they are, who you are. But people say you are what you eat. The person that you are, it comes from you somehow. I care about how I look in the sense of I have an audience and I have young kids. And I remember when I was very young and looking up to movie stars. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine a child being disappointed from seeing a star? that they look up to and somehow they don't get that thing that they want to receive. As Tina mentioned, she was a strong follower of the Buddhist faith. But how and why did she begin the practice? I've been practicing 10 years. When I started, it was just being introduced for two years. So that was like 12 years ago that it started in California. And uh, there was a girl working at the recording studio that was talking about it and she told me about it. And I decided to test it to see because my religion was Baptist, and which was given to me by my parents because they were basically Baptist background. But this was one I, I made the decision for because it's like uh, after becoming a woman, your views and things are different. So I liked all well, the scientific view. Mm -hmm. It taught me something different that uh, Baptist had not taught. So that was comfortable for me, and I started practicing. Do you say that this tradition now is the most important factor in your life? A part of my life. It has become a part of my way of thinking, a part of how I live. And from that practice, I'm, I'm becoming happy. How does it affect your daily life? A way of thinking, less stress, blame. The oriental view, I mean, yeah. you know, it came from the Orient. So sometimes we just think our world is the only one and this is the only way of thinking, but there are other people in the world that have other um, concept of life and so this is there's a world that believe this way part of the world and it made sense to me so I started to practice mm. as Tina discovered Buddhism she began chanting the mantra Namio Hurengikyo which is less about the literal meaning behind the words but more about the way they activate vibrations through your body she revealed in an interview Chanting helped me to go within myself and open deep sources of happiness and wisdom in my own heart and mind. It sounds and the sounds resonate the chakras and starts the wheels turning there. And that is the whole vibration that makes the contact actually with the subconscious mind. They are words. They, it reads similar, I would say in some way, like the Bible. We have translations now of what really? it, but it reads, it's scientific kind of, it reads you must be able to just take it in to understand it. I had to teach myself because I didn't have the freedom to actually go to meetings or for people to come to me. So I remember working really hard and I'm happy that I, that I did it that way because it was on my own that I really struggled for it and it, it changed my life. Buddhism is, is also a, a way of living, isn't it, right? Yes. It's more than a faith. Yes, actually what happened, my, how I view it is that it, it is something that one depends on. Like, I think, like, I need my refrigerator, I need the clothing on my back, I need shelter. And chanting takes care of that spiritual side, that subconscious mind that I tap into. My reality is God is given us the faith, but we have to find it, we have to work on it to find the God within us. That, let's say, that coin. Now that we've heard Tina's thoughts on chanting, it makes me curious what her views are on prayer. The real Tina is on stage, performing, singing, etc. I was born anime book. I was born into a Christian family, 
and prayer was always in my life. I put importance on it because I realized that it helps you in your struggle in life. My parents separated early, so I was kind of like a, not an orphan, but a very young girl without parents, and prayer was always there. So when I became Tina, I didn't drop the prayer because Tina helped me financially and my career. But the background, the strength of the whole thing was the fact that I was always spiritual. I never stopped praying. I still pray. I will always pray. It's a, it's a function that we all need to find some part to do, some time in the day to give a little bit of time to yourself to help you. With her Buddhism, prayer, contributions to various charities and causes, and resilience against drugs and alcohol, Tina has been able to diminish the image of a stereotypical rock and roll star. You partook in uh, Ban Aid and Live Aid for Africa in 1985. Has this movement, do you think, altered the attitudes towards rock artists? I thought for many years because I never did drugs, I never drank, and I, and I never smoked. And I've always thought that people put rock and roll people down simply because of um, the reputation of other people. In other words, it was like rock and roll people aren't intelligent, they're not real people, or good people, or whatever, you know? And I think that that got the people to stand up and listen and say, hey, these are people that pack halls, football stadiums. These are people that are successful and there are people that like what these people do. And then when that happened, then all of a sudden they said, well, maybe there is a possibility that these people are all right. Cruel, but that's the world and that's the life. I always knew that there were a lot of good people in rock and roll music. I, I'm in rock and roll music, I've been there forever. There are a lot of wonderful people, but they are not classical singers. They're not, uh, they're rock and roll. They're free music loving people, you know, and they live there life a bit more freely. So I think that's why I was basically put down. I think more and more now, a lot of the people are coming out of themselves to make that kind of statement. So more and more people are getting a little bit of a different view because of that. And people of the rock and roll people are feeling a little bit more freer to, to show that they do have the tenacity to uh, make some statement. It hasn't always been easy for Tina. In addition to having dealt with a very public and abusive marriage, she also endured a difficult childhood and multiple life-threatening illnesses. Still, she was somehow able to find a deep sense of peace within herself. I so found a wonderful place uh, within me that I am. I would need as much time as you have had with this interview to explain it. I'm at peace with myself, I can, I can say that. I think I'm over most of my karma. And my life is ro rolling very harmoniously and, and days of happiness. Happiness is not something that's every day, you know, it's spurts of it, which makes it even more wonderful when it comes, you know. Uh, my life is good. I can't think of a thing at the moment that I really want to do. If I never did another thing at, at this time, I'm all right. Um, which I'm sure there are some other things that I will do because of this newfound feeling that I have within me. I feel like I can take a deep breath and say, I'm fine now, I'm okay. I have touched a place in my soul, my life, my understanding, my way of thinking, my peace within me has all come to one. I think that I will live a long life, but I think it's for a reason and I accept it. I don't dwell, I'm not touched by a lot of things. If I am, I really get right to dealing with it. Sometimes I think about my life. I think, I went through all of this. I must have survived it. Someone said, you could have been dead, and you could have been not even existing as a singer, but I am. So it's the same thing. Something out there that's magic about my life. And a magical legacy she's left for us all. Rest in peace, Tina Turner, the queen of rock and roll. <laughs>